Lesson 9.6, Word Problem Solving, Find a Pattern Rule. We can use the strategy Solve a Simpler Problem to help us solve a problem with patterns. We can find a pattern using simple numbers, then use the pattern that we found to predict results with greater numbers to solve the problem. As we learned in video 9.5, we can find the rules for two sequences, then find the rule that relates the sequences to each other. We have this sequence going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So the rule for this sequence 1 is to add 2 to get to the next number. For sequence 2, the rule is add 6. We go 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. We can continue the sequence if we keep adding 6. And the rule that relates sequence 1 to sequence 2 is multiplied by 3. 2 multiplied by 3 is a 6, 4 multiplied by 3 is a 12, and so on. We have three rules. The one for sequence 1, the rule for sequence 2, and the rule that relates sequence 1 to sequence 2. So we can use the relationship between the two sequences to find missing terms. Remember, terms are the numbers that are in a sequence. And we can make a table of values of the terms to find greater numbers in the sequences. So when you see this dot, 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 that's called an ellipsis. It means that we're jumping from 10 to 20. So we're going to jump from 30 to some greater number that is related to 20. We know that if we multiply a number, a term, from sequence, sequence 1 by 3, we'll get the number, the term, for sequence 2. That means if we multiply 20 times 3, we'll get this unknown term. That would be 60. Now, if this was very confusing for you, just click the description and go back to video 9.5, and that'll help you out. For every 6 square foot section of garden, Mr. Kim planted 12 flowers. If he planted six sections, what is the area of the garden and how many flowers did he plant? So we can make a table using the Ginvran information, then find rules that will relate the sequences. So here we have the sections, one section, two, three, four, five, six. We're looking for six. And the area in square feet for one section is six square feet which is 12 flowers, we're going to add 6 for the area in square feet, because if he has 2, he'll have double this, that'll be a 12. And if the number of flowers for one section is 12, we're going to add 12 to have 24 for two sections. And we can fill in the unknown information in the table by either adding 6 for the square feet or adding 12 for the number of flowers. We can also look at the relationship between the sections, the area in square feet, and the number of flowers. One to be a six is one times six. We could do one times six equals six. And six times two would equal 12. So we could do times two. And we can check for two sections to see if this rule works. 2 times 6 is 12. Yeah, so times 6 works here. And 12 times 2 is 24. So yes, so this would be multiply by 6, and this would be multiply by 2. Now we can find the missing information for six sections. It would be 6 times 6, which would be 36. And remember, we also could have just done 30 and added 6. And for number of flowers, we do 36 times 2, or we could even do 60 plus 12. That would be 72. So the area of his garden would be 36 square feet, and he would have 72 flowers. Sarah made identical beaded necklaces. Each necklace used 4 green and 12 orange beads. If Sarah made 14 necklaces, how many green and orange beads did she use? So we think we can make a table of values showing the number of beads for each necklace. If she makes one necklace, she's going to use four green beads and 12 
orange beads. If she makes two necklaces, then she would use eight green beads and 24 orange beads. And the rule for this sequence for green beads is to add four. And the rule for the orange beads is to add 12. But what about 14? We could make a very long table, adding four and adding 12, making the table keep going until we got to 14. Or we could find a rule that we can multiply the necklaces by to get the green beads and to multiply the green beads by to get the orange beads. And we look at the values that we have. We have one times four is four, two times four is eight, three times four is 12. So the rule here is multiply by four. From the green beads to the orange beads, we're multiplying by three. Four times three is 12. We check it with this one. 8 times 3 is 24, that works. 12 times 3 is 36, that works. So this rule is multiply by 3. That means to find the green beads for 14, we need to multiply 14 times 4. 14 times 4 is 56, so we know she would use 56 green beads. And we can multiply 56 times 3 to find the amount of orange beads. 56 times three is 168, so we know she would use 168 orange beads. Remember, these little dots are a way of saving space so that we don't have to list five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. We skip from the four to the 14. We skip from 16 to 56. We skip from 48 to 168. Sophia is using a double T block design to make a quilt. Here's a double T block design. This is one block for a quilt. In her design, each pattern adds five blocks and 80 triangles. She used 40 blocks on her quilt. How many patterns, like this, of the five blocks, and triangles did Sophia use? You can see all the little triangles. So the number of patterns for one would be five blocks and the, would have 80 triangles in those five blocks. Two of them would be two times five, that would be 10. That means we're adding five for this sequence. And for two of them, we would have 80 plus 80. 80 times 2, that's 160. So we're adding 80 as we're going in this sequence. We need to know what would happen, how many patterns and triangles she would have if she used 40 blocks. So we know the number of blocks, but we don't know the number of patterns, and we don't know the number of triangles. So we look at the relationship between the sequences going vertically. We have 5 times some number is equal to 80. We can do 80 divided by 5, that's equal to 16, so it must be 5 times 16 is equal to 80. We look at the next one, 10 times 16 would be 160, so it is times 16. So to go from the number of blocks to the number of triangles, we multiply by 16. And for the number of patterns, we look at the relationship, it's going from a 5 to a 1, this one's going from a 10 to a 2, this one's going from a 15 to a 3, this one's going from a 20 to a 4, and 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3, 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2, and 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So we know to go from the number of blocks to the number of patterns, we need to divide by 5. And we can find the number of patterns by doing 40 divided by 5, that would give us 8. We have to do 40 times 16 to find the number of triangles. We do our multiplication, and we find it's 640 triangles. We needed to use the given information, the number of blocks, to compare it to the number of patterns and the number of triangles. Using a rule makes it easier to determine the relationship between the objects in a pattern. Then the rule can help us decide which operation to use, 
how many patterns and triangles if Sophia used 120 blocks in her quilt? We can use the same rule, divide by 5 and multiply by 16, to find the number of patterns and the number of triangles. 120 divided by 5 is 24. We'd put a 24 for the number of patterns. The rule from the number of blocks to the number of triangles was multiply by 16, so we can multiply 120 times 16. We get 1920. That's a lot of triangles. So we know if she uses 120 quilt blocks, she's going to need 1920 triangles, and she won't be able to make 24 patterns. The operation we choose for our rule depends on the given data. Cats, if we have one cat, it's got two ears and it's got four legs. If we have two cats, it will we'll have four ears and eight legs. And for this sequence, we just add two because there's two ears on each cat. And for this sequence of legs, we would add four because there's four legs on each cat. To go from cats to ears, we just multiply by 2. To go from ears to legs, we multiply by 2. And we'll be able to use the number of cats to complete the table. If we're multiplying by 2, 4 cats times 2 would be 8 ears. 8 ears times 2 would be 16 legs. Because the information we were given was four cats, we used the four to help us find the other missing values. Three times two is six, six times two is 12. Now look here, we have the number of ears, but we don't have the number of cats and we don't have the number of legs. So we'll be able to use the number of ears to complete the table. We look at the relationship for six and three, six divided by 2 is equal to 3, 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2, and so on. So that means we're going to do 8 divided by 2, which is a 4. Then we can do 8 times 2, which is 16. Because we were given the number of cats in this table, we were able to come down with our arrow and multiply by 2, then come down again and multiply by 2. Because in this table, we were only given the number of ears, we had to go up and divide by 2, and go down and multiply by 2. So the operation we choose for our rule depends on the given data. We need to look for a pattern. Look at figure 1. There are 5 gray squares. Now in figure 2, there's 5 gray squares, and in each corner there's a blue square, so there's now 9 squares. For figure 3, we have the same pattern as figure 2, but now we've got a gray square in each corner. There's 13 squares in all. For figure 4, we have the same as figure 1, 2, and 3, but now we've got light blue squares in the corners. Now there's 17 squares. So look at the difference from one figure to the next figure. If we draw figure 5, the next figure, how many squares would they be? I mean, look at what's going on. We went from 5 to 9 to 13 to 17. Do you know what our rule would be to add? We find the difference between 9 and 5, that's 4. Between 13 and 9, that's 4. And between 17 and 13, that's 4. The rule is to add 4. If the rule is to add 4, and this figure has 17 squares, figure 5 must have 17 plus 4, which would be 21 squares. We look at the difference from one figure to the next figure to try to find the rule, and we found that it was add 4. As you're doing this, make sure that you're really paying attention to the rule and the relationship from one sequence to the next sequence. In our next lesson, 9.7, we're going to graph and analyze relationships with ordered pairs. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you have a really nice day. Bye.